from what's going on with Toyota and Lexus Smart Key simply by looking at the LED in the fob. This is an older one from a Gen 2 Prius, doesn't have that LED, but the newer ones with the LEDs, when you get close to the vehicle, start walking within a few feet of the vehicle, you should see the LED blink. That means that 134 kilohertz signal from the door oscillator or the trunk or hatch oscillator, whichever the case you're walking up on the vehicle from perspective wise, has made the fob see a signal. Now the next thing will happen is when you get closer and that certification ECU says, oh, they're talking to me, uh, it's the vehicle ID, I see that, I want a password now. That's the key ID. This guy will then blink because it sends back that key ID on request. Now, if you want to talk to a Prius, Camry, Lexus, whatever owner who's having battery rundowns and you can't find anything wrong, here's a tech tip. Look and, or ask them, is there anything that's an RF signal that's broadcasting 315 megahertz? Chances are they're going to go, what? But ask them if there's anything that could be making the kind of frequency, any, any electronic items, any gadgets that could be in proximity to the car in your garage or whatever that would keep that, that certification ECU woke up because the oscillators keep seeing something. In addition to just the proximity of the car and getting into the car and seeing if the door will, will unlock when you put your hand in the opening, that's all telling you that the, the door oscillators are working, the FOB's batteries are okay, so you see the light, you see it flash again, so it saw the signal from the, from the uh, door oscillator at the command of the uh, certification ECU, so you know those are working, you see that light. We know this guy is working and actually sending the right code. It's registered at least for entering the vehicle. If you can passively unlock the doors by putting your hand in the opening. And then when you slide in the vehicle, if you see the word key not detected, you may have an issue with the room oscillators. So looking at this spreadsheet up here, the event number one, when approaching a vehicle, the LED on the electronic key flashes. What does that mean? Conclusion, it means the key is partially registered, if not fully. The, the vehicle ID is good. The certification ECU is functioning and the door oscillator is functioning. So we know all those things are good. The tuner is functioning and also the key's battery is above 2.2 volts. They are a three volt battery, but 2.2 will barely carry it off. The vehicle battery is good enough for all this to work. We talked about that little tech tip earlier. And number two event, the dome lights, interior lights begin to come on. Well, that's telling you that the certification ECU has seen a good vehicle ID and key ID. So we registered this guy and they were transmitting to the key, uh, the, the correct key ID codes that were transmitted then to the body control module. So when the, uh, the, the key code box, the lock box for the key, when that sees the right message, it tells that BCM to start working and turn those dome lights on. So now we know that that module's working as well as the BCM. The third step here, the third event, open the door warning, open the door, the warning light should come on the dash. And if that works, you know your courtesy switch is working okay actually in the door. The step four, the, when the key is taken inside the vehicle, the key LED flashes. So when that happens, you know the room oscillator is flashing. It's making that guy flash because it's in the car. You're close to that room oscillator in the console. Number five, engine power switch LED illuminates. They all have a button. There's no key. Remember, this is a smart key. The engine LED, the button itself that says power, that illuminates green after the brake pedal is depressed. That's only on Camry, by the way. Prius doesn't do that. You've got to have somebody check your brake lights or look in the back of reflection in the shop door or whatever, but hit the brake pedal and the brake lights come on, that tells you that that's working. But if you see an LED on the power switch on a Camry, that's telling you when you hit the brake pedal, that's telling you the brake switch is working properly. Uh, number six, if it's a Camry, it may have, or a Lexus, it may have a steering column lock. In that case, if it unlocks, the ID code box, one of those uh, subordinate officers on the submarine here, the ID code box is functioning, meaning it got a proper S code to the steering column ECU. It's functioning, and it saw that uh, the L code for lock. So the S for security, that functioned from the calibration ECU 
to the ID code box, and then the message between the ID code box, the chief commander of the boat, the Cobb, to another subordinate, just a regular old sailor, the steering column lock module, that worked as well. The L code was verified if that steering column unlocks. And remember, if it is really unlocked, but it doesn't think it's unlocked, nothing happens from this point forward to actually, actually starting the vehicle. In event number seven, security light turns off as it should. That means the lock bar in the column, we were talking about a second ago, work, the steering wheel is unlocked and the switch says it's unlocked. That means that the certification ECU works there, the ECM is functioning because the ECM commands that and the three bit code has been sent to the ECM. So when the security light goes out, the ECM says, I saw the G code. That's the go code and that's what the ECM is going to say. You can turn the security light off now. I'm happy with what I'm seeing. We'll start the engine. If it's a hybrid, we'll also send that same G code, the GO code, to the hybrid ECU to get those battery, high voltage battery relay contactors to close and get those orange cables connected to the front of the car. And of course, if the engine starts and runs, you know that the G code has been verified. Not just sent, it's been verified and everyone's happy. A lot of stuff going on here and these are some things you know what's working when you get to these different points. So make sure you make a note of this chart. More Toyota troubleshooting on smart key here. If you have a, a suspected fob issue, you're not sure if the low battery, what's going on there, I guess you could take the top off, measure battery voltage, that might be prudent to do. But if the vehicle has a slot, not all smart key vehicles have a slot to throw this thing into. But if it does have, and you slide it and nothing's working, you can't unlock the vehicle without hitting the buttons or maybe you hit the buttons and nothing happens, you had to use the emergency key to get into the vehicle, but the battery, the 12 volt battery in the vehicle checks okay, simply slide this guy into the slot and you see that little thing, it looks like a resistor or heater, that's another oscillator, that's an exciter reader coil, like I mentioned before, just like an immobilizer in any other vehicle. And it's gonna make this guy do what the same type of device does to a smart key, to a immobilizer key with a pellet, it's gonna bring it to life, and then it's going to ask it what its vehicle ID is, what its key ID is, and if it's happy, that's being sent from that, that particular oscillator to the BCM and back to the hybrid, or I'm sorry, back to the certification ECU, the captain of the ship, and then on to the other officers and accordingly. So there's what's going on. That gives you a really good clue. This guy doesn't work. You slide it in the slot. It works. You know you've got an issue with this and the batteries. Other issues that are going on. When you've got RF generation, I mentioned earlier that the customer says, my battery keeps running down, you can't find a cause for it, leaky diodes, a dome light sticking on, whatever. And so you test the battery, it's charged up, it's good, the alternator's working great, you don't have a clue. You might find out, is there anything, give me some clues, is there anything near that vehicle? Televisions, personal computers, who knows what people put in their garage? A cell phone left on in the vehicle, uh, anything that can generate that 134 kilohertz wave or the 314 megahertz wave from the fob or 134 kilohertz signal from the oscillators could wake up the vehicle, run batteries down, or keep these guys from working correctly. So there is a possibility of EMI, electromagnetic interference, causing problems. Other things can cause problems. We mentioned this with other vehicles near uh, TV towers, near high tension wires, automatic payment machines, such as at gas stations where they have the little uh, transponders for getting gas, like, like fleet accounts and so forth, wireless remote control operations, people doing things all the time with, with uh, remote controls near the vehicle, all those can interfere with the operation and also possible battery rundowns.